Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Today I'm going to be reviewing Ian M. Banks' sci-fi novel, The Player of Games. The Player of Games, first published in 1988, is the second novel in Banks' culture series, a collection of interconnected stories that aren't sequential but are all set within the same fictional universe. In this universe, the culture is an ambiguous, fictional, interstellar society comprised of human, alien and machine entities that span the galaxy. I'll leave a link here to a previous video where I summarise exactly what the culture is and an overview of how the society works. All reality is a game. Physics at its most fundamental, the fabric of our universe, results directly from the interaction of certain fairly simple rules and chance the same description may be applied to the best, most elegant, and both intellectually and aesthetically as satisfying games. In the play of games, Gergay is one of the culture's greatest game players. He lives for the satisfaction of the next game, ever seeking a worthy opponent. He is the master of every board, computer and strategy, but the tedium of success has crept in, and he begins to question his entire life. Manipulated by events, Gagay finds himself leaving his life behind to travel to the Empire of Azad, a primitive cruel people, to try a game so complex that the winner becomes Emperor. However, all is not what it seems. For Gagay, the game is just that. For the Empire of Azad, however, it is so much more than a game. It is a way of life. It infiltrates every area of society, dominating both surface and covert political processes. And when Gagay begins to win, the consequences are deadly. Stifled at every turn, Gagay just wants to play the game. It is a challenge of his life, and very possibly his death. You cannot choose to have the politics you do. They are not some separate set of entities somehow detachable from the rest of your being. They are a function of your existence. On the surface, the player of games would seem to tick several boxes when it comes to some of the books I like to read, with elements of space opera, dystopian fiction and political intrigue all being promised. So I went into this book fully expecting to like it. And did I? No. I loved it. These elements were paid off in spades. It has space opera thematics that anyone who's read Banks sci-fi before no doubt expect from a book in the culture series, but its concepts are widened to delve into authoritarianism and conspiracy that would hold up against any dystopian story or thriller. The space opera elements were expansive but decidedly much more grounded than say consider Flebas, for example. It's less battles in space and much more battle of wits. The authoritarianism themes presented a fresh take on a popular trope, with the Empire of Azad using the game as a method of selecting the great despot and also a way of stratifying society into a sort of hyper-fascist caste system. I've got a couple of observations about the authoritarianism theme that I'll discuss in the spoiler part of the video too. Games as a theme in itself also presented Banks with the opportunity to reveal more facets of the culture, building upon what he began in the previous book in the series, Consider Flebus, specifically in terms of giving the reader greater insight into what it's like to live as a citizen of the culture, which is something I really enjoyed reading. In terms of allegory, you could endlessly analyse and dissect aspects of the Empire of Azad and how it mirrors aspects of human culture that either exist today or have existed in our history. However, this is done from a point of view of an objective observer from an arguably higher developed civilization as the culture. There is an element of commentary that runs through the book which I enjoyed immensely. I exult when I win. It's better than love. It's better than sex or any glanding. It's the only instant when I feel real. On the characters and writing, I generally find I get on well with Banks' style, and that I think it does what all good writing should do, which is essentially to present complex thoughts and ideas simply. In contrast to other novels within the culture series, which are often grand in scope and plot and structure, the player of games feels more grounded, being from the perspective of the protagonist Gogay for most of the book, and keeping along the theme of the original premise. A side note on this, before reading this book I knew what I didn't want from it. 
I didn't want it to read like an instruction manual for a game that Banks had meticulously invented, with scenes comprising two people sitting at a table, as each move is described in tedious detail. Thankfully, this is far from what we got. Banks was able to convey the playing of the game without resorting to boring the reader with an entire handbook of game rules or conveying bland scenes of inactive gameplay. But like I said, this isn't what we got. Instead, how Banks approached the gameplay scenes were some of the most thrilling. The story felt darker in many ways from other work, including Consider Fleabas, which has a certain stylized sense of humour in the writing. But I think that's to be expected given the subject matter of some of the content, which at times made for uncomfortable reading. Which I love, by the way. I don't think a book that tackles these themes should ever be a comfortable read. I also want to take a moment to praise the political intrigue in this book, which was done extremely well, and as I mentioned before, for me holds up to the standard of a thriller. I think modern sci-fi writers that attempt to wade into political intrigue would do well to read The Player of Games to observe how it should be done. This is the story of a man who went far away for a long time, just to play a game. The man is a game player called Gogay. The story starts with a battle that is not a battle, and ends with a game that is not a game. Next, I'm going to go into the spoiler part of the review to go into the book in a little more detail. If you don't want to be exposed to hyperspoilers, you can skip ahead to the time at the bottom of the screen for my final thoughts and star rating. Pretty early on in the book, we get a sense of Gagay's scale of morality. Now, what I really liked is the fact that he cheated at a game, thus opening himself up to blackmail and developing the story. It would have been very easy for Banks to have written some other way of initiating the story and getting a gay to the Empire of Azad, but doing it this way really humanised the character in a way that was interesting and believable. I've always said that I don't need to like a character or protagonist to get on board with the story, they just need to be interesting. But. The great thing with Gogay was that even after he cheated, and despite his own vanity and flaws, I still ended up really liking him and rooting for him as a person. I also found this revealing about the culture itself. We know that Gogay cheated to win at a game, and right at the end we find out the true identity of the Sprant Joan, that it's really more in scale, and that it had lured Gogay into cheating so it could blackmail him at the request of the culture. This shows what lengths the culture is willing to go to and reveals the level of metagames being played throughout the book, but also raises another point that got me thinking about the theme of authoritarianism, and I ended up asking myself if there was really much difference between the culture and the Empire of Azad, in how it was willing to exert power and influence over its citizens. This is one I haven't been able to come to a decision on just yet. But the ambiguity of the culture is one of the most intriguing parts of the culture books for me. The Player of Games is a must read for fans of space opera and dystopian fiction, especially if you like your despots ambiguous, your characters flawed, and your sci-fi to leave you with a residual taste in your mouth that you won't get rid of for months after you've finished, if ever. It's a well-written and multifaceted story that refuses to simplify anyone or anything into the black and white categories of good and bad. The player of game exists entirely in the grey, and does so unashamedly, something I'm personally thankful for. With this in mind, I gave the player of games 4.5 stars out of 5. So that's it for this review, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe in all the usual ways. Until next time guys. Happy reading.